Hello, my name is Cindy Chui. I'm the application engineer with Keysight Technologies. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to use S-parameter PCB model in ADS Memory Designer to do a memory simulation. To run any memory simulation, we will need six different components. They are the setup component, the simulation engine, and your PCB component, uh, the memory controller, and the memory DRAM component. And also we'll need a memory prop to uh, do the measurement. Among all those components, the PCB model can support multiple a type of uh, a channel model. It can be the EM model created by the ADS EM2 SI Pro. It can be a touchstone as parameter file, or you can use a pre layout like a transmission line model in ADS. And for the memory controller and the memory components, you can load your IBIS model or IBIS AMI model for DDR5 or LPDDR5. Before we do in the setup, let's see what's the key information we need to provide in each component. They are reference designator, they are signal type, signal index, and the channel ID. In this case, the controller model is U1 and the memory model is U60. Then you will need to use the U1 and the U60 as the reference designator in all your components. The first step is to define the setup. So here you can select which standard you want to run the simulation and also the speed grid and also write and read mode. And the second step is to define the PCB model. Uh, in this demo, I'm going to use the data file, which is the S parameter touchstone file for the simulation. Let's select this option. For some S parameter model, uh, if you click on the check and view S parameter, S parameter is already included. There's the port name, which uh, you know provide the needed information for all the reference designator, the signal type, and the signal index. So for this type of S parameter, we can load directly. And if you click on next, you can find all the needed information have been defined, you know, automatically. But for some other cases, you may have an S parameter model without any port name definition. For example, this one, there's no port information. So after we load this, you can find a lot of columns are empty, right? So we need to give those the needed information. So the key information will be the reference design. So remember the controller uh, chip is the U1 and the memory chip will be U60 for our design. So I'm going to give this two. And you can use the control C to copy one of them and use that to define all other uh, nets very quickly. Just uh, highlight all of them and right click, paste. The same thing for U60. Once we do that, we also need to change the signal index and the signal type, right? So the easiest way, I'm going to search U1 only and define the first index to be zero and select all others. Right click, increment index from a first selection. So automatically you got zero to seven. And the other tool will define them as a DQS signal. So double click, select the DQS T and DQS C. We're going to do exactly the same thing for U60. Let's wait down all the settings. You can save this as a CSV file if you want. Finish. Then let's see the memory controller. So for this one, you can load your IBIS file. And for controller side, the reference uh, designator will be U1. So you want to enable U1 for this model. And then for the uh, DQ model, you can search all the DQ lines. And then you can highlight uh, DQ1 to DQ7 and the right click to enable them for simulation. And also the same case, you want to select uh, uh, DQS0. Uh, for both the C and the T node, we selected already. Then let's select your IBIS model. So for all the DQ line, I will group them into one group. 
And the good thing for that, you can uh, batch mode edit the group model or the DQ model in one shot, right? So for this uh, design, I'm going to select this IO model. And uh, you also can click on this DQS to select the corresponding model as well. So that's where we finish all the settings for memory controller. And we can do the same thing for your memory, uh, load model. And this time we are going to enable U60 because uh, this will be your memory reference designator. And we also select a DQ0 to DQ7 and the DQS0 for our simulation. The same thing for model, I group it and I select the input model for all my DQ line and my DQS as well. Okay, so that's the finish all the model inputting. The next step will be uh, do automatic connection. So you just need to insert a where between different components. Because we ensure the reference designator, the signal ID are identical, right? So if you click auto connect, uh, all the uh, signal nets will be connected automatically. Uh, and the same thing for memory components, right? Everything can be done automatically. So we we'll finished the setting already. The last step will be define the measurement item. So the first tab, commonly you don't need to modify anything. All those uh, data will be defined automatically based on the JEDEC standard, right? But if you want to make change, you can input some customized value as you need. And then we select a, a signal. So for this case, uh, for controller side, I only select a zero to three. And uh, receiver side, I also want to check the eye diagram from zero to three and the DQS uh, signal. And the next step, select the measurement for each signal, right? If you highlight uh, this two group, then you can uh, select all the needed uh, measurement item here. So, right, all other settings we can just uh, skip for this demo. Then we uh, finish all the settings. Uh, let's uh, launch a quick simulation to check the result. So once the simulation done, you will get uh, all the simulation result, including the DQ line I diagram. This is at the controller side. And this is DQ0 and DQ1 at the receiver side. Uh, and these are all the margin uh, measurement uh, data for all your DQ lines. Okay, this is all my demo. Thank you for watching.